Good morning, everyone. I'd like to ask you a question to start off. Where were you on the 15th of February 1971? It's a major day in the history of Great Britain. It's a day we went from this over to this. The day we went to decimalisation, where a hundred pennies would be equate to a pound, these little coins here compared to these ones, because for these big fellas, it was 12 pennies to a shilling, 20 shillings to a pound, and therefore 240 of these big pennies equaled one pound. It wasn't just a change in decimalisation. It was a change in education because today children are taught the 10 times table. You learn how to add up to one and count to 100. In my day, you learnt the 12 times table because 12 times 12 equals 144 because there's 12 pennies in a shilling. There are also 12 inches in a foot, three foot in a, or feet in a yard. And therefore, we will learn differently. Now, I, when I knew the change was coming in in 1971, I just kept my pennies and I've got pennies that got the Queen's head on it, her father's head on it, George the Sixth on this one here. I've got pennies with her grandfather, uh, George V, her great grandfather, Edward the Seventh, and her great great grandmother, Queen Victoria. And here's this penny here, dated 1867. And as you can see, it's extremely flat with not much relief. There's the Queen's head, you can hardly make out. But this penny, when I got it in my pocket, was over a hundred years old. But not only did you, you know, I have pennies in my pocket that spanned a hundred years, I also have pennies which come from other countries. You'd have pennies from Ireland with a harp on it. I had pennies from Jersey. And these slipped into the, the British coinage because we did the minting for these countries, but not just uh, Ireland and Jersey nearby. We did New Zealand and Australia, a New Zealand penny see much with a robin and even east africa penny with a hole in it and suddenly when i go to get my change having spent some money say a shilling at the shops i'd get changed some pennies and i would find in my pocket as we've seen here pennies from all around the world that got into our coinage in daily shopping and i find it quite amazing that me as a, a young boy could experience all these pennies from around the world how did a penny travel all the way from australia and get into my pocket. Uh, how did they get round the world? But also is when I go through my pennies, they've all got um, different years. At the bottom of a coin, you know, there's a date, a year. This penny here is dated 1867. It's 150 years old. And I was thinking about what happened in 1867. Uh, Johann Strauss debuted the Blue Danube Waltz in Vienna. Um, the US Congress created the first department of education. Queen Victoria and Napoleon II agreed not to create a channel tunnel. In 1867, they made that decision. Uh, Karl Marx Das Kapital was printed and Charles Dickens, for those discreet persons are here on listening, Charles Dickens went to New York and for the first time did a live reading of one of his books. And all my coins have a date. And they've got things, events that took place. I've got a coin penny dated 1912, the, the launching and the sadly sinking of the Titanic. I've got another penny dated 1914. And that's fascinating. That's the start of the First World War. I've got one dated 1916, which is the Battle of the Somme, when many thousands of men were killed. Another dated 1918, the end of the war. And I've got one dated 1919. And it's always struck me was, that penny I got in my pocket, I wonder if a soldier was given it at the end of the war and he comes back in 1919 to Blighty and he goes and buys his first pint of ale for many years on British soil. And as I go through the dates, 1945, the end of the war, uh, 1966, the World Cup, each of these coins have history attached to them, events that took place when they were minted, but not just the events of of the world but they will have personal memories you know this coin here from victoria it's been rubbed uh, in people's pockets rubbed by people's hands passing it across and it's now you can hardly read it but how many thousands and thousands of people have had this penny in their pocket or in their purse and they've paid for groceries for food for a drink a meal or a grandfather giving it to a grandchild here's a penny to go and buy some sweets because when i was um 
four or five, six, I was given a penny to go and buy sweets from the local shop. I could buy four penny jacks for the price of a sweet. Now, to buy a Mars bar, it was just three of these old pennies. Now, in the conversion in February 71, they said two and a half of these pennies equate to one of these. So basically, my penny bought me a Mars bar. And a Mars bar, I think, costs about a pound now. And it is a lot smaller than the Mars bar I had. When I had my Mars bar, when I was five or six, I had to use two arms to carry it home. It was so big, my three pence. But it struck me the memories attached to these coins that one cannot imagine. The things they went through, the things they saw, the different hands they exchanged. A penny from New Zealand gets into my hand. Could a Maori have held it? My imagination runs right of what these pennies are. And I have this collection of pennies here, which I, I kept over the time of, um, well, they were going to disappear. And there was a, it made me think because there was a saying when I was young, if you saw somebody standing or sitting and they seemed deep in thought or concentration, you'd say, a penny for your thoughts, a penny for your thoughts. What were you thinking about? And sometimes we go into a, a, a phase where we're just thinking about things in general, perhaps having a memory of something in the past. And the thing about memories, there are good memories and there are bad memories and there are sad memories. And our minds are intermingled with all these types of memories. And of course, memories is how we learn. If you've been bitten by a dog, you won't forget it. So next time you see a dog running off the lead around the streets, you remember what happened last time, so you're a bit wary of what could happen this time. But then you have good memories of events that have been great fun, you've enjoyed with family or friends or at church. And then you have the bad memories where things happened that you rather didn't or you did something and you regret it. And our minds are filled up with these and our mind is very good at filtering our memories, sifting them. But for example, if you break your leg, extremely painful, although you remember the event, the pain sometimes can be dulled and disappear in those memories. And we like to make good ones. And so we have a head full of memories. I'm not good at remembering things. I can remember what I had for dinner yesterday and what I did. The day before gets a bit hazy. Louise, my wife, she can remember back 30 or 40 years. Do you remember this? Do you remember what the kids were wearing at this point 35 years ago? And I haven't got a clue. But I always say, oh, yes, I remember it. But I want to ask the question is, how do you think God remembers you? You say, well, it's God, God sees me. Well, God remembers it says this in Psalm 25, verse 1. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me put, be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour. And my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are God. It says in that last verse 7, Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are good. And the Bible talks about God remembering. Not necessarily the things, things that we do wrong, but when we get to Judgment Day, he says it will call up as Christians what we did. Memories. So I thought we could all make a new start today. We're going to make memories, that's without question. We'll remember things of last week, things happening, particularly in this poignant time with this virus and all locked down. But actually making a vow to create good memories that God will be pleased with. A memory that makes us smile. A memory that makes our family smile and our friends smile and laugh. A memory of good. A memory of encouragement. A memory where 
yeah, we should go and do that again. But a memory that God says, I enjoyed that. That means not just being positive, but looking for the good in all things situations. It says in scripture, all things work for good for those who trust in God. Difficult one. But how we behave in difficult circumstances is what our family and friends see. As I've learned from past experiences recently, being strong when inwardly I'd want to be weak. Setting ourselves a cut above people in times of panic and worry because we come with peace. We're not keepers of peace, we are peacemakers. We have an inherent gift from God to be peacemakers. And my prayer for this day is that you start creating lovely memories which bring a smile to you, your friends, your family. But God says, I remember that. I'm going to clock that one and put it away. It's precious. Lord, it says, show me your ways. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me for you are God my saviour and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are good. Have a great day. Bless you.